Today, I will seek to answer the age-old question, the question that has plagued readers for generations. What should I read next? So last night, I finished reading a book and I really liked it a lot. And so there comes that moment where I know I'm gonna have to pick another book. So I figured today I'd show you my three favorite ways to pick my next book, walk you through them, and sort of treat this as rounds in a selection process. First, let me show you the contenders. Option number one is The Farthest Shore by Ursula K. Le Guin. Pros for this book. It's the third book in the Earthsea cycle, and Lord knows I need to finish some series, so I'd be making progress towards that. I'm really in the mood to read some high fantasy. I love classic high fantasy, uh, and this would fit the bill. It's also pretty short, which might be nice, because I'm trying to rebuild my confidence in terms of finishing books in a fairly timely manner. Next up is Eye of the World. So I did start this earlier this year. I put it down. I didn't quite DNF it. Pros for this book is I'm already most of the way through it. This is also high fantasy, which I am in the mood for. And it's also a series that I'm currently reading. So I'd be making progress towards finishing a series. Next is How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. Pros for this book. It's a standalone, which means that I won't be starting a new series. It's a short story collection, which seems like it might read quicker than a full length novel. And it's science fiction, which I really like. And it's something that I might be in the mood for. So we'll see. System Collapse by Martha Wells. Pros for this book, I would be completing a series. I was caught up on Murderbot until this book came out. So if I read this now, I'd be catching right back up. I also love Murderbot and I tend to read them fairly quickly. So I think this would be a nice cozy fast paced book for me knowing how much I love this series. A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This one might come out of nowhere. Pros for this book, the last book I finished broke my heart and I loved it. And it's pretty rare for me to want a book to do that to me. And right now I kind of want a book to do that to me. So maybe A Little Life? We also have Ancillary Sword. This would be making progress to finishing the Imperial Radak trilogy. I liked the first one and I'm pretty keen on getting to the second one soon. I don't think it would be a quick read for me, but I think I'd be happy about it taking a little longer. And last but not least, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I'm curious if I'm in the mood for literary fiction right now. And so we'll find out as we go through these experiments. I've also heard it's a great example of platonic love, which sounds super appealing to me right now. So we'll find out if this is the one. Test number one, the first line test. This is a test I use to form an initial impression as to what the book's gonna prioritize. It's not something I use to make a final decision about whether I wanna read a book, but it's something I consider. That's why it's round number one. We're gonna get an initial impression of each of these books. Starting with the farthest shore. In the court of the fountain, the sun of March shone through young leaves of ash and elm, and water leapt and fell through shadow and clear light. About that roofless court stood four high walls of stone, Behind there were rooms and courts, passages, corridors, towers, and at last the heavy outmost walls of the great house of Roke, which would stand any assault of war or earthquake or the sea itself, being built not only of stone, but of incontestable magic. Pretty good. I'm gonna skip this one for the eye of the world because I've already read 60% of it. <laughs> How high we go in the dark. In Siberia, the thawing ground was the ceiling on the verge of collapse, sodden with ice melt and the mammoth detritus of prehistory. The kilometer long Batagaika crater had been widening with temperature rise, like some god had unzipped the snow topped marshlands, exposing woolly rhinos and other extinct beasts. That's pretty cool. System collapse. Dr. Bardwaj told me once that she thought I hated planets because of the whole thing with being considered expendable and the possibility of being abandoned. I told her it was because planets were boring. Classic murder bot opening line. <laughs> a little life. The 11th apartment had only one closet, but it did have a sliding glass door that opened onto a small balcony from which he could see a man sitting across the way, outdoors in only a t-shirt and shorts, even though it was October, smoking. Willem held up a hand in greeting to him, but the man didn't wave back. Ooh, I like it. Ancillary sword. Considering the circumstances, you could use another lieutenant, an Andermanai ruler for the moment of all the vast reaches of Radakai space, sat in a wide chair cushioned with embroidered silk. This body that spoke to me, one of thousands, looked to be about 13 years old, black clad, dark skinned. Her face was already stamped with the aristocratic features that were, in Radakai space, the marker of the highest rank and fashion. Under normal circumstances, no one ever saw such young versions of the Lord of the Radakai, but these were not normal circumstances. Keep in mind, this is a sequel. That makes sense to me because I read the first one. <laughs> tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Before Mazer invented himself as Mazer, he was Samson Mazer, and before he was Samson Mazer, he was Samson in Mazer, a change of two letters that transformed him from a nice, ostensibly Jewish boy to a professional builder of worlds. And for most of his youth, he was Sam, S-A-M on the Hall of Fame of his grandfather's Donkey Kong machine, but mainly Sam. My name's Sam. <laughs> Ooh, this is gonna be hard. Okay, let's see. I gotta eliminate two of them this round. I'm gonna eliminate Ancillary Sword. Uh, I read the first book in this trilogy a, a couple weeks ago, and I'm just not ready for the second one yet. I wanna put a little space between me and that 
the pun was intended. <laughs> so this one's gonna have to wait. I'm also gonna eliminate how high we go in the dark. I'm not super happy about that, but I think I wanna keep the others around a bit more. That's tough, okay. Uh, man, see, this is, this is the nature of the decisions we have to make. Our lives are so hard as readers. <laughs> Okay, so that means we're down to five books. I'm gonna have to eliminate two more on this round as well, unfortunately. That's gonna be so hard. Ah, oh, I loved all those opening lines. So this round is called the page 99 test. Now this is what I commonly use when I'm in a bookstore and I'm deciding what to buy. Uh, this is what I use when I'm on the fly and need to pick something fast. This gives me a pretty comprehensive look at what the style is gonna be like just at some random point in the middle of the book. There is very rarely a spoiler that means anything on the 99th page. In everything that I've done this with, I've never run into a world ending spoiler that ruins the book for me. It's never happened. Okay, let's do the farthest shore first. Okay, okay, I like it. I already know from experience that I love Le Guin's writing style, and that's most of what the page 99 test shows me, is what's the what's the style, what's the vibe, what's the prose gonna be like? Once we get past the ticker tape and fanfare of chapter one, what's the prose gonna be like? Is this a style that I'm gonna resonate with? That's something I already know about Le Guin, but uh, was nice to be reminded of. Okay, now for A Little Life. Oh, oh, that's good. Oh, that really, oh wow, oh my gosh. <laughs> Again, there were no like major spoilers on that page, but the style and the, the feeling of it was really nice. It painted such a vivid picture of such normal things. And I think I've heard that that's what people often like about this. And the way that it talked about like getting older and growing up and feeling like an adult, just on that one page, man, this has me really, really intrigued. We'll see what happens in the next trial, but, but I think this one's gonna move on. For Eye of the World, I'm gonna read the just actual page 99 because I've already read it and I want to see if it calls me back to it you know where's page 99 there it is okay nice I do remember that part um and it's reminding me of what I like about this book and, and what I would be getting if I returned to it that's a good page 99 I, I'm curious about this again next up is system collapse Oh, <laughs> oh, this is reminding me why I like Murderbot. Man, the atmosphere that was on that page, chef's kiss. Man, I really do miss this series. This is gonna be such a hard choice to make. Oh my goodness. We see Murderbot with like scouting out this area that's creepy and feels really creepy and atmospheric. And now I'm really curious what happens next. <laughs> it's a doozy, it's gonna be a tough one. And last but not least, we'll check out Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Page 99. Ho ho ho, okay. Wow, the descriptiveness, the way that I, despise a character that I've only read one page of. <laughs> but like, it's supposed to be despised. That's like, wow, that is incredible writing. Oh my goodness. Okay, I hate to say it, but I think I'm gonna eliminate Eye of the World for now. I'm just not excited about it enough right now. It's not the time for me to return to this yet. Wow, I didn't think this would be the one that I was gonna say, but I think I'm gonna eliminate the farthest shore. Am I? Do I want to? I don't know if I want to, but the others, I, okay. So I have it down to four books. I'm just gonna do that and that'll be how I make the decision. <laughs> this is, hey, hey, this is my YouTube video. I make the rule. <laughs> So round three is the book flight. Now this is something that I usually do when I have a list of books I wanna read, but I don't know exactly which one I want. Uh, sometimes I'll do this with like three books, sometimes I'll do it with like seven books. Uh, but essentially I get a lineup of books I wanna read and I read the first chapter of each. This informs my decision pretty well because I know which one I wanna keep reading. So I'm gonna read the first chapter of each of these and then we'll reconvene and we'll talk through my decision. We'll, we'll figure out how this is gonna, gonna rationalize in my brain. <laughs> we'll figure out how this bubbling soup of random chapters amounts to a decision about what book to read. <laughs> multiple hours later and I finally narrowed down the options to two books 
that I'm still deciding between. Number one, The Farthest Shore by Ursula K. Le Guin. And two, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zebin. It's gonna be really hard to choose between these two. I was really hoping I'd be in the mood for the Murderbot one, but I, I just don't think that it's the right time for me to read that one. Hopping into the first chapter, it was like right into an action sequence and it I felt like a fish out of water. I uh, think I, I'm not in the right mindset for that right now. I'm looking for something else. A Little Life was beautifully written, but it seems more intense than I'm looking for at the moment. And, and I'm hoping to come back to it when I, when I really want that, I don't know, fraught relationships type of thing. The Farthest Shore has the same magic that A Wizard of Earthsea and the Tombs of Atuan had, but but now we see a, a couple of the main characters at different stages of life and it, it's really good to see them again and, and I really want to see what happens here. That said, I think I'm going to frequently be in the mood to read Earthsea and I don't know if I'm always going to be in the mood to read tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, but right now something about it is kind of calling my name. It's been a while since I've read literary fiction and it seems like it's doing something for me right now. I hate to do this, but I think I'm gonna have to sleep on it and decide tomorrow once I've had some time to process it and, and see what I gravitate towards in the morning. So I'll see you once I come up with a conclusion. <laughs> now the next day it's actually the next night i took a little while to think it over and i haven't had much time to read today but i arrived at a conclusion it was a really hard decision to make but two great options and i would have been happy either way i decided to go with tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow by gabrielle zevin for my next read i feel like it's not every day that i'm in the mood for literary fiction and reading this first chapter yesterday uh i realized that i am suddenly for some reason and rather than question it i'm gonna try and ride that and, and see uh, see where it takes me, see if I like this book. I've heard so many awesome reviews from people who have similar taste to me and people who have different tastes from me, which really piques my interest and reading the first chapter yesterday seems like the right time for me. Additionally, I know that I'm gonna be in the mood for The Farthest Shore frequently in the future. It's just a writing style that always appeals to me and a mood that I'm very often looking for. So while it's likely that I'll be in the mood for The Farthest Shore next, I don't know if I would actually be in the mood for this book next. So that's why I went with it. I'm gonna read the next chapter uh, right after I film this basically. Uh, and I'm really excited to get into it. This seems like an awesome book and I'm very excited to check it out. If you made it this far in the video, I think you'd be a great fit to be a subscriber to this channel. So scroll down real quick, hit that button and see my next videos as they come out. Thank you as well to my incredible patrons. They follow me over on Patreon. If you'd like a shout out right here with these awesome folks, go click that link below. I'm also in the process of making my Patreon benefits better and I'm gonna be adding more benefits in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. Let me know down in the comments how you choose your next book. I would love some more strategies to try out uh, the next time I'm looking for a book. Okay, that's all. See ya.